Everybody has a favourite woman in their life. Maybe it's your mother, maybe it's your wife, maybe your girlfriend, maybe it's your daughter. For me, it's this beautiful person, Dylan Mulvaney. I'm absolutely just... I owe so much to Dylan. I just absolutely adore her. I'm absolutely kidding, by the way. There is not a more painful human being in existence. And Dylan has doubled down on that fact by releasing a brand new song, Days of Girlhood. It's basically, if you don't know anything about Dylan, was a man, now isn't a man, and went through the whole process on TikTok for everyone to, to see. Even the, the first time uh, she bought tampons, which is interesting because she has nowhere to put them. Anyway, the song, which I'm sure you want to hear, you shouldn't because it's just auto-tuned and horrific. It's, it's, it's the 2020s version of Friday by Rebecca Black. It's absolutely horrific and terrifying and terrible and oh my God, it's given me PTSD and I can't leave the house. Anyway, this auto-tuned abomination, which I won't play you any of the music because they will take my AdSense Stay away! Is very, very interesting. And I, I, I think you should watch it. I think you should listen to it. And I think you should put it on your gym playlist because let's be honest, nothing will motivate you more in life than if you don't get out of this deep squat or you don't bench press this weight, you're gonna be a weak man. And you know what happens to weak men? They turn into Dylan Mulvaney. Although she does have a lot of money, which is very nice. But also looks like this. Interesting. Before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, this video is brought to you by Bio Optimizers. Ah, oh, Dickie, I'm so tired. I can't sleep. This baby, Addie Boy, he doesn't like snoozing at night time and it's making me feel exhausted. Ooh. Shut your guts, Butterfield. You're tired. You wouldn't know what tired is. And I've been telling you now for weeks. You need to start actually using your brand deals. You mean <laughs> this magnesium breakthrough? I love it. These babies leave me in a state of blissful relaxation. Seven forms of magnesium? That is actually quite impressive. I'm not just being a smart ass to sell a product. It's got magnesium chelate, biglacinate, magnesium malate, autonate, turatate, citrate, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually have taken magnesium products for a very long time. And you know what the hardest thing about getting a good magnesium product is number one, quality, but also getting the right type of magnesium. And that's why BioOptimizer's Breakthrough Magnesium is the bee's knees when it comes to getting the right amount and getting the best quality magnesium for your body to make you feel calm, relaxed, cool, calm, cool, and just less stressed. It knocks out the stress, the overthinking, the muscle aches, especially with a screaming baby. Head to biooptimizers.com forward slash Butterfield to get 10% off. And if you're true blue Aussie, head to www.optimoz.com. Dot AU and thank you very much to Bio Optimizers for sponsoring this video. I love them and I'm gonna have one right now and finally sleep! Now this video itself is about Dylan Mulvaney trying stand up for the very first time. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I've been doing it for 10 years and I like to think of myself as, you know, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to comedy. I'm by no means the best comedian in the world, but I've been around long enough to know what's absolutely shit. So let's see if Dylan Mulvaney is any good at all. Uh, the past two years have given me a lot of material. I bet. And we're in Salt Lake City, so I'm going to do some stuff around my Book of Mormon show that I was in. You were in the Book of Mormon? I've got some beard jokes. Isn't the Book of Mormon written by the South Park guys? Is this, is Dylan Mulvaney not a South Park character? Anyway. A little bit of everything. And I think everyone should try stand-up at least once in their life. Yeah, you should try it once in your life in the same vein that, you know, you should try anal once in your life. It's probably gonna end up shit. And a lot of it. That's how I imagine Dylan's stand-up. It's, it's, it's pulling out and a big fountain of shit follows. That's what I think. Because there is nothing scarier and afterwards you feel like you can literally do anything. There's nothing scarier. I don't know, you scare me a little bit, Dylan. Just a little bit. Okay. Wish me luck, I'm about to go on, but I do- You're about to go on, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? But I do look hot though, right? No. This is good, this is good. Be. Okay. I, I, would be, I would feel like I was a part of something bigger than- What the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> that was a double entendre, look at me- Hang on, hang on, hang on. I missed it. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay. Beast, I, would be, I would feel like I was a part of something bigger than this. <laughs> that was a double entendre, look at me doing stand up.
Did that grown woman just spank herself as a part of the punchline? I, I've performed to some pretty rough crowds before in my life, and if, if anyone went out dressed like that, you would have a beer bottle thrown at you. Conservative men are just pissed that I can beat them in beer pong. <laughs> Yow! Female audiences are the fucking worst. I've seen the way you act around female comedians, hooting and hollering about shit. Fuck off. Like, you don't have a sense of humour. I'm sorry, ladies. Some of you do. And my wife's the funniest person I've ever met. But by and large, as a whole, women, not funny. So maybe Dylan is a female. I don't know. And the conservative women are pissed that their kids are calling me mother in all of my Instagram <laughs> Their kids are calling you mother? Is that something to be proud of? that children think of you in a motherly way when you've been a woman for a year and you are a laughing stock of both the regular community and the transgender community. It went so well. Oh Doesn't God, that was amazing. And I get to do I it again at 10.30. I'm so happy. Oh, she's doing two shows a night. She's sold out. She's incredible. She's far better than me. But that's not the only thing that Dylan Mulvaney's been doing. Just last week, she was representing all women when it came to International Women's Day. Ladies, you think you need a day? No. Oh. That's cute. Anyway, um, yeah, she did this with Lady Gaga. Yeah, because on International Women's Day, when you celebrate everything that it is to be a woman, you want to celebrate someone who was a man for 20 fucking five or 26 years and now he's a woman. That's what you want to do. That's who you want to celebrate. Not other women that have been through the same things that you've been through, but just some random who you've seen on TikTok that buys tampons to put in holes that don't exist. If you put your mind to it and you work hard. Lady Gaga's nose is horrific. Sorry. And you never give up and you do not. I feel like these two are going to suck each other's noses, which I look forward to. Listen to the rejection. Anyone can say anything with that backing track and make it sound profound. I can't use that backing track in this video because YouTube will take it down because of copyright, but I could say that my feet are rather itchy and just like in life, if you're itchy, scratch it. Profound music does wonderful things. You can achieve anything. What is this? That life throws your way. Fuck off. I did want to talk about something rather important in this video though, because I've been accused of something in my stand-up quite a bit. And now that we're talking about Dylan Mulvaney, a very woke person, a person from the left doing stand-up, uh, I feel it's a good time to talk about it. Here's a question. Should you be able to punch down in comedy? Another way of asking that question is, should you be able to make jokes about people who are seen as oppressed? Particularly if you are one of those groups that is not oppressed. I'm talking about white people. Should white people be able to make jokes about people who are not white? Or men making jokes about people who are not men? Or straight people making jokes about people who are not straight? That's essentially the question. And the question also makes you believe that you are a higher status than other people, which is just horrific. That is fucking horrific. I remember when I got cancelled for an Aboriginal joke last year, people were saying to me, you're making jokes about people who are vulnerable, who aren't at the same level in society as you. People were saying things to me like that and I couldn't believe it. I was like, you genuinely believe that? That's a racist way of thinking. That's a horrific way of thinking. I don't think that anyone's different to me. I don't care what skin colour you are, what race you are, what gender you are. I treat you with respect if you treat me with respect and I will make jokes about you just in the same vein that you make jokes about me. It's not punching down, particularly when it's stand-up. I'm trying to make people laugh. That is it. That is quintessentially it. If I'm telling a joke and people laugh, then it's funny. Alright? Punching down is funny if it makes people laugh. Whether it's Aboriginal people, gay men, trans people. Why? Am I supposed to protect them because they're seen as vulnerable? Why do they need to be protected from offence? They're grown ass people. I'm sure they'll be fine. In fact, just last weekend uh, in Victoria, I had a trans person in the front row and I was we were having a great laugh about what it means to get top surgery, bottom surgery, all that type of shit. Because we're fucking around, I'm saying it with a big smile on my face. If I attack someone, that's different. That's not punching down, that's being a dick. That's being a piece of shit. There's a whole range of different thoughts on what is funny and what should be funny and what humour actually is. According to the online publication medium, laughter is the emotional release to a buildup of psychic energy. In other words, tension and release. Hannah Gadsby's Nanette is a masterclass in this theory. If any article you read about stand-up or anyone's opinion that they 
they're giving about stand-up. And then references Nanette by Hannah Gadsby, the most unfunny human being on earth. You should absolutely, without a doubt, ignore everything that you've just read or heard and possibly find the closest hammer and whack yourself in the fucking face because you need to forget everything you just heard. It's garbage. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video was because of this article. Unfunny business. Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais sink to new depths. Netflix's latest specials show two once funny comedians continuing to punch down in a desperate quest for relevance by this bloke, Charles Bramsgo. He's a critic. Oh, babe. Now, the article itself, which I won't read the entire thing, but it actually resembled more of a breakup letter from a depressed teenage girl than more than an actual critique of anything. It speaks in volumes and for what seems like an eternity about how he didn't like Ricky Gervais's special and doesn't like Dave Chappelle's special because they punched down, apparently. They talked about things that Charles thinks that you shouldn't talk about. Oh, baby. Charles dictates his opinions and feelings to a dedicated audience of who I can only assume is nobody because who the fuck gives a fuck what this fucking idiot thinks and then ends the article with what I can only assume is major depression. He dissects every one of these specials and you're not supposed to dissect comedy. And that is, I guess, the problem with seeing a lot of comedy on TV or on TikTok or Instagram. You see just the portion of the show, and it may very well be very funny. But if you're not there in the audience, you're not signing into that social construct that everything that's being said here is in jest and a joke and just... I know when people get cancelled and a comedian will say, oh, it was just a joke. And then all the people who, the woke people, will go, oh, it was just a joke, it was just a joke. Yeah, but it was just a joke. I don't know how you want me to fucking argue with that. It was. <laughs> that, that's it. The more you dissect comedy, though, the harder it is to laugh. And that should never be done. And if you're a critic and you're critiquing comedy shows, shut up. One exception to that, of course, is Hannah Gadsby. But she gets all the five-star fucking reviews from the critics. Which, once again, should make you go, don't listen to these fucking people. Another argument I hear when people have had a crack at the jokes that I've told on stage is, oh no, other offensive comedians they're using satire and they're writing the joke to shut the fuck up no they're not you're just picking and choosing for whatever reason and honestly you can joke about anything and the audience will tell you whether or not it's funny except for dylan mulvaney's audience which will laugh at fucking anything particularly if she pulled a tampon out of her ass that would be humorous. Comedians and comedy shows are not supposed to be safe spaces. They are supposed to push the boundaries. And I just happen to enjoy offensive comedy, so that is what I am going to do myself. Now, if you don't like offensive comedy, that's a shame because you must suck. But also, just don't watch my shit or don't come to the show. Pretty simple, right? I learned this in America with all the comedians I saw there, um, particularly at the Mothership in Austin, Joe Rogan's club. They all push the boundaries there. They're not scared of fucking anything there. And then you come back to Australia and you hear comedians here and you're like, wow. It is like little kids writing jokes here in Australia in comparison to the adults performing in America. It is completely different. A comedy show should be like a fight in a black room. You should never be able to see where the punches are coming from and they should surprise you. But never forget that the comedian doesn't believe what they're saying because if they believed what they're saying, no one would laugh because it's genuinely hateful and hate isn't funny. You should be able to punch up, punch down, punch wherever the fuck you want and anyone should be able to tell anything on stage. The people who decide what is funny and what isn't funny is the audience, except for Dylan Mulvaney's audience because they're women and they don't understand comedy. Comedy is the last bastion of free speech. Except for in Australia where the Human Rights Commission goes after comedians. Yeah, that's still a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, my dick stinks. Check out Better Man is on pre-sale right now. I can't wait for you guys to read it. Uh, be a good motherfucker, did I already say that? See you later, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check this out. This is Better Man, my new book. Uh, over the past 18 months or so, I worked on this and I tell you what, I'm very, very proud of it. It is a manifesto on modern masculinity, what it is to be a man, what it is to be a good person and a better version of yourself. It's not a memoir, it's a man moi, ladies and gents. I think you will absolutely enjoy it. It's not an autobiography by any means. It does talk about my life and what I've gone through. I've been through a lot of mental health issues in the past. Well, not a lot. I was never fully schizophrenic, but I've had some issues. Uh, but it details how I dealt with those and continue 
to deal with those whilst doing stand-up and videos and raising a family and, and all of those different types of things. And ladies and gents, I think you will really, really enjoy this. I spent a lot of time on it. I, I really worked hard on it. And it means a great deal to me to now have it in my hands, ready for you guys to see it, uh, read it, and uh, become a part of it. Pre-order the book right now. Let's push our way to number one on the charts. So head to IsaacButterfield.com right now and grab yourself a copy of Better Man. Thank you.